It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, April 5th, 2012. I am James Burns. We are joined now by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how are you doing today? Well, pretty good. Yeah, it's not a bad day here in, uh, well, the uh, south either. It's uh, sunny, uh, blue skies out there, probably a couple of chemtrails. But there is definitely a lot I'd like to cover with you this afternoon. Uh, first off, uh, I want to you know, go across the uh, ocean to uh, Europe and uh, get the latest economic news going on out of the EU. And it looks like things are getting a lot more violent in Greece. Yeah, they are. And they're going to continue to get worse, unfortunately. And I think the deal is going to fall through. We'll probably know in May or June. And they'll default, and Ireland and Portugal will follow, and then Spain will be next. Yeah, it's just sad to see this happening to so many people. I I came across an article yesterday, Bob, regarding a a retiree in Greece basically committed suicide out in the middle of the public eye, you know, because of the situation going on there. I mean, a lot of people in Greece and other countries that will soon follow are, are losing everything. Well, that's true. And the gentleman uh, uh, cleaned up his wor- or worldly affairs and uh, committed suicide in front of Congress. Yeah, and I, I get this feeling, Bob, that this, this isn't going to be the last uh, individual that ends up doing this. I mean, it, and there's probably a lot of people that are in the same boat that this gentleman was, and I, I really, I really don't want to see that happen either. But I just have that bad feeling that you're going to see a lot more of this as, as the situation continues to deteriorate, not only in Greece but throughout the rest of Europe. Well, many of them have uh, uh, already committed suicide. Uh, hundreds. You just don't hear about them. No, I mean uh, that's usually the case. I mean, the the uh, I mean, for example, the uh, numbers of uh, American soldiers that have committed themselves, you know, committed suicide over the past decade because of the war on terror. I mean, it's astronomical, way higher than than the numbers that have been killed in in combat. But the mainstream media doesn't talk about that either. No, they don't want you to know. And they're owned by the Illuminati, and it's the end of that. Exactly. And that's why we're on the air. That's very true, because we, ha- we have to get out there and we got to resist them through the alternative media. That's why you've been doing what you've been doing for so long now, and I've been doing what I've been doing for the past couple of years, because you know, we have to get the truth out, because unfortunately, they don't want the people to know about what's really happening in Europe and in the United States and throughout the rest of the world. Well, that's completely true. Speaking of the media blackout, and this, you know, we're jumping quickly to, the, to another topic, uh, the, the mainstream media has been obviously doing everything they can to belittle, demonize uh, the Ron Paul campaign. And Fox News even came out with an article yesterday, Bob, about how, you know, where's the Ron Paul campaign? Where is he? But there's no coverage of last night's event that Ron Paul held at UCLA, which drew over 10,000 people. The place was packed, yet Nothing for the mainstream media. Well, that's typical. And that's why you're going to find you can't change things through government. There'll be violent revolution. I just hope the military steps in and takes the government over <clears throat> and asks for volunteers, and I get plenty of them. And then, you know, drag these people out, throw them in jail, and go after them financially and incarcerate them. And those who have committed treason, like George W. Bush, uh, they should be hung. But there's a lot more than him. No, I mean, you're absolutely right about that, Bob. I mean, if you were to have them line up, you know, the, the list of those that have committed treason against the United States, it would probably go all the way around the Capitol building and then some. Well, it's okay. I have plenty of time to hang them. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you have a very valid point there, Bob, because that that's something that I, I talked to somebody about last night, and she and I were having this discussion, and she asked me the question, okay, so so we we have all this information through the the various entities in the mainstream media reporting on everything going on throughout the world, and you know all the crimes carried out by tyrannical governments and the elite, and not to mention all the voter fraud going on in the uh, primaries and caucuses. Like, at the end of the day, w- where do we go from there, Bob, with all this information? I mean, how do, we, how do we use that information towards reaching that end goal of turning things around? Well, I think if you discovered that we're making more people understand, but not nearly enough, and they refuse to do anything about it unilaterally. So the only way that can change is through a hopefully bloodless clue, coup. But that's, that's where it's headed. I'm, I'm not advocating it, but I look at history, and when you get situations like this, uh, that's what happens. And you're absolutely right about that, Bob. I mean, all you got to do is take a look at history. Anybody with any knowledge about historical events, you see that there's a cycle where history repeats itself over and over again, and that's where I see uh, things heading in this country as well, probably not only here in the United States, but but throughout the rest of the world. And I I sincerely hope that it is, whatever happens, does turn out to be uh, without incident, without violence, without bloodshed, because that's the last thing we want, because that has, uh, well, as history has proven, the... um, means of escalating and spiraling out of control. And you're correct. And this is and another probably, thing. Probably, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Bob. Uh, jumping the gun a little. Uh, you know, another issue that you, you brought up as well regarding this whole thing was the fact that we don't, we, A, we don't really do anything, and B, we, 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 we are, are carrying out the very definition of insanity, repeating the same mistake over and over again, and what I mean by that is, and we'll use uh, the United States as an example, and this is happening in many countries across the world, we continue to keep the, the top parties in power. We continue to vote for this party or that party, no matter what. Even, even if, like, the Republicans, they, they screw us over for a couple election cycles, and then we vote in the Democrats, and they do the same, and then we go back to the Republicans. And as long as citizens continue to do this, not only in the United States, but throughout the rest of the world, nothing's ever going to really change. And that's why I said what I said. I think it's inevitable now it's too late. But if we can get people to pick up freeze dried and dehydrated foods and a water filter and an assault weapon with plenty of ammunition... That's like a thousand rounds per weapon, ten thirty shot clips. Uh, you got to do that. It's an insurance policy. I mean, you're looking at people going to gun shows. In four hours at the, the beginning of the gun show, all their ammo's gone. Two full forty foot trailers. Now, does that tell you anything? It tells me that we're heading for a very precarious situation because not only is ammo running out at gun shows and gun stores throughout the country, you also have the government themselves buying hundreds of millions of rounds of ammunition. I mean, there's something afoot. That's right. Fortunately, most of these boobs who work for the government don't know anything about weapons. No, not really. And, And it's still my hope, Bob, that there are good people that do work in the government, that they're not all evil, um, you know, scum and villainy, as they say in uh, Star Wars, that there are some that truly do believe in the Constitution and Bill of Rights, and when the time comes, they are going to stand on the right side. I mean, that's, that's what i got to hope for. I mean, at least with, with, you know, local law enforcement and with the men and women serving in our military, you know, hopefully, if we ever did, do get to that scenario, that they will be on our side. Well, I have a lot more faith in the military than other people do, and uh, you know, here, here are people already made to order because they know how to kill people. And most people don't. I mean, if you've ever had a face-to-face confrontation where you had to use your gun, which I had, 
uh, you can see that it's not as easy as you thought it was. Killing someone is a real heinous act, and you'll never forget it. It absolutely is, and and anybody that that thinks it's going to be like you know playing a you know a video game or Doom or or something where you're you're going to be able to easily pull the trigger on somebody, even someone say breaking into your home or one of these uh, you know police state goose steppers. I mean, you have you've got another thing coming because you're probably going to get to the point where you're going to have to take another life. I mean, I, I hope we don't make it to that, that to that cliff and end up spiraling in that direction, but it is my fear that it's going to come to that, Bob. Well, if it does, it does. I know one thing, they're not escaping. No, absolutely not. And, you know, they're, they're continuing to the tighten the screws on us as well. You know, they, they pass more executive orders, more police state laws. I mean, another example here, I came across this. Senate Bill 1813 will suspend passports for delinquent taxpayers uh, it passed the Senate by a vote of 74 to 22, and it's headed towards the House. And in uh, Section 4034 of this uh, bill, 1813, it states that any individual who's more than $50,000 owing to the IRS, you know, those goons, uh, may be subject to action with respect to denial, revocation, or limitation of a passport. So they're definitely doing everything they can, Bob, to keep people from being able to escape the country as the collapse is coming. That's true. I would think it would be pretty easy to get out, but going back in uh, would be difficult. Yeah, I mean, so they I know that they... Uh, I came across something else what, a month or so ago that they've actually raised the prices on passports as well, so they're, they're definitely making it... A, a lot more difficult. Plus, you know, anyone that tries to uh, expatriate themselves, if they happen to have any money, uh, they'll they'll rob you blind just so you can get out of the country. And I mean, and Ron Paul brought up this very valid point during one of the debates regarding the uh, the the border fence. And you have all these neocons always talk about we need a fence, we need a fence. But he he made a very interesting observation. And if you look at history, especially recent history in um, well Berlin with the wall, I mean. Not only can a, a wall be er erected to keep people from coming into the country, in a worst-case scenario, it can also be used to keep us from getting out. That's right. But that, that's something that a lot of people don't really bother to think about too much. But it's amazing that, you know, once again, you have Congressman Ron Paul, you know, speaking truth, out there enlightening people, making individuals such as myself, you know, think about something in a different way. And it's just sad that you don't have... Uh, enough people out there listening to this man, while at the same time they they rally to Mitt Romney, who's really not too much different from Obama. They're all the same. Bought and paid for. Absolutely. And it's just very funny, Bob. You look at this list of uh, contributors to Obama, and most of them are also donating to Mitt Romney's campaign. I mean, why, why, why is it so difficult for people to see the obvious? Well, a lot of them are just dumb, and the rest of them just don't want to know. You're right. And Americans don't have a monopoly on, the, on intelligence. We have a contingent in America that's every bit as stupid as people in the other countries. And, you know, that, that's a sad truth there, Bob. It's just sad how... The, the education system in this country has been deteriorating for quite some time now. Not only that, you also have uh, programming through um, the mainstream media, through TV, through Hollywood, through the government, dumbing down the populace intentionally. And it's just sad because most of the people out there are, are brainwashed, zombies, jellyfish, and sheeple. Yeah, you're right about that. But that's, uh, 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 that's really what I was saying. And uh, and you've been saying that for years now. I mean, you've been pointing out the that fact, that reality that we have to contend with on a on a daily basis. I mean, the, the good news is not all of them are are completely under, you know, sedated, but you know, a lot of them are. And the good news is, thanks to yourself and many others out there, we are waking people up. We are waking up more people 
this year than we had a wake this year. So despite how dark things are with the growing police state, with the loss of liberties, you know, with the war drums beating as usual, you know, we are continuing to, uh, I believe, have uh, victories in waking up the populace against what's really happening. Well, I think they're going to be forced into reaction. And uh, the people who are behind government, they know that. Yeah, I mean, things are definitely coming to a head, Bob. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And here's another bit of uh, propaganda that I came across, Bob. MIT, researchers at MIT are predicting a global economic collapse in population decline by 2030. And this study was produced for the Club of Rome. And the models of the study went into uh, several uh, you know, aspects, population growth, uh, global resource uh, consumption, agricultural productivity, birth control, and environmental protection efforts. And basically the study says that without drastic measures for environmental protection, the scenario predicts the likelihood of population and economic crash, which is exactly what the elite are doing. You're absolutely correct. And the Club of Rome is one of the uh, clubs that uh, groups that are behind uh, all the things that you see going on. They're all in on it. That's why you never hear any negative comments about world government because uh, they've all get given into the situation. You're right, and, and that's something else that uh, somebody else and I came up with the other day. We were having a conversation, you know, your fellow Ron Paul supporters and I were sitting around talking, and someone asked me the question, like, why, why doesn't the mainstream media talk about the Bohemian Grove and uh, Bilderberg Group and CFR? And the fact is, uh, a lot of the mainstream media are in on it. All of the mainstream media are in on it. In my opinion, Bob, having journalists involved in this, not reporting the activities going on in these organizations like the Bohemian Grove, like Bilderberg, like Club of Rome, like Trilateral Commission, the CFR, etc. In my opinion, that's treasonous and a violation of their oath as someone who's supposed to report the news to the public. And they should go to jail. I hear all the time from editors and they tell me, they tell their people, their journalists, don't write anything about this or that or this or that. And they're forced to because of the people at the top. And that's why none of this information gets out. Could you imagine what it would be like, Bob, if they actually did go to the Bohemian Grove and went inside Bilderberg and all these different organizations and reported everything that went on. I mean, what would, in your opinion, what do you think would be the public's reaction to that? Probably nothing. Alex Jones made a film on it some years ago. He got in there and taped it all. It's all there for people to see. They just don't want to know. You're right. It's sad because that's been out for over a decade now. And, you know, he went in there to Bohemian Grove. He snuck in. And uh, he videotaped the cremation of care. And, well, the mainstream media did everything they could to try and squash it and say, oh, well, they, you know, that's, that's nothing. It was just a play. It was no big deal. These, these guys are, are not up to anything. They're just hanging out. It's just a private country club. And the public doesn't care. We all know what they go there for. Mm-hmm. It's just sad because they, they, they seem to care more about, well, baseball season started this week. They seem to, to be more concerned about that, if, whether or not their team is going to you know, go and win the pennant in the World Series this year than the direction this country and the world is heading. You're right about that. Yeah, it's just it's sad because, you know, once, once upon a time I, I watched a little bit of sports, you know, a little bit of basketball when I was younger, some baseball mostly was in the football, but once you wake up to all this, once you realize what it's all really about, and as you know, Alex Jones has so well pointed out, you know, it's bread and circus, just like what they did back in the uh, Roman times. It's, it's a distraction. It's just a game. It's, it's not important. It, there's 
nothing to it, and yet you have these people going to the games, investing so much of their time and energy and money and emotion into it, and it just it's just sad to see now. I think uh, the uh, the lawsuit is being brought against. Um, the Royal Bank of Canada <clears throat> for making what they call wash trades. And they didn't mention parking. They, are, they, they also do that among themselves. And this could lead to the end of naked shooting. And we're talking it's some big, big numbers. Billions and billions. It's been going on all these years, and it's the first time I saw a lawsuit pertaining to that. Somebody had to have blown the whistle. Yeah, but just like you mentioned a moment ago, Bob, I mean, the people probably don't care. They probably care more about hockey season, baseball season, their favorite reality show, than something important like, like that, in, that uh, lawsuit that's going on. Well, the answer is uh, get ready. I mean, I, I you would chose, love... You chose to not open your mouth. You went into denial and you didn't care. Now you're going to have to fight for your life and you don't have the tools to do it. That's, you know, that's the sad truth right there. You have so many people out there that, you know, for whatever rhyme or reason, whether it's that they're... They've just been completely dumbed down since day one, or they, they chose to bury their head deep in the sand to ignore what's going on around them. You know, there's going to be a reckoning, Bob, and it, it's coming. You know, we, we don't know when, obviously. It could be a couple days from now. It could be a couple months from now or a couple years from now. But as long as people continue to be ignorant and, well, in my opinion, immature and not taking personal and individual responsibility for themselves and their families and loved ones, uh, well, they're going to be regretting it when that time comes. Uh, I think the regret's going to be, <clears throat> not from government, you know, be, be from marauding gangs, looking for food, things like that. And I, I see that happening. Me too. What happened to the Florida incident with the young man who got killed? Yeah, he evidently it, didn't read the rule rule read the rule book. Then again, could he read? Well, there, there's already been several uh, incidences, Bob, in the uh, news that I've I've dug up, uh, where several uh, whites have been attacked in retaliation to what happened down there. I mean, the, the, these were individuals, citizens, who had nothing to do with that incident in Sanford, Florida, yet because of, you know, the, you know, everything being stirred up by the mainstream media, by the Obama administration, by the new Black Panthers, by Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, and others, it's, it's, it's leading towards a very dangerous situation where you have young African Americans going out there, you know, thinking, oh, well, we got to do something about this, so... Let's go find some, you know, white people to beat up. And it's it's not leading towards a good, I mean, outcome. It's going to get nasty if this continues. I think you're right. And uh, black people, don't get involved. Don't do that. Stay away from it. You don't stand a chance. You'll get t entirely wiped out. And these illegal aliens, if they do the same thing, they will be wiped out. They're no match for the American citizen in his knowledge and taking action to defend himself. It's a very, very dangerous situation that's brewing. And... Unfortunately, so many groups are being used by the powers that be, which is nothing new. It's happened for too long now, in order to create a situation, a crisis, an event, uh, to their fitting. And it's very obvious that they want 
this type of scenario to happen, Bob. They they want some sort of uh, hostility between different groups, say whites, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, other groups, in order for there to be a, a worst-case scenario for us all, a race war, so that they can come in with their stormtroopers, with their police state, and basically – you know, clamp down on us. But, of course, as you well know, Bob, they're going to sit back and they're going to let people slug it out and kill each other before they finally do walk in as the fake saviors. You got it down. And uh, it's going to get nasty. It is. And, you know, one of the objectives... They, they divide the three groups. That, in part, will neutralize them and they'll be able to be taken control of by Homeland Security. That's the idea. You're absolutely right about that. It's, it's divide and conquer. And that's one thing that, that really bothers me is that we are part of the same species. It doesn't matter if you're white, you're black, whatever. We're, we're humans. We're, we're in this together for better or worse. And they through the mainstream media, through these various organizations, intentionally stir the pot and divide us because they don't want us united to get together against them because if humanity was to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, uh, they would be in serious trouble. Well, they'd be in more trouble than otherwise, but if they can get these people to do things to one another, then they'll have more control. Exactly. And another obvious, you know, objective of this whole situation that happened a month ago in Sanford, you know, they're going after our guns. And I just came across this a few minutes ago before the show from Political. The Trayvon Martin resolution introduced. Several black congressional black caucus members have introduced a resolution to memorialize the 17-year-old Trayvon Martin that calls for the repeal of the controversial gun law that allows shooters to claim self-defense. They're going after, you know, that, you know, stand your ground rule in Florida. And that's just the beginning, Bob. They're also going to be setting their sights on the Second Amendment itself. You're right. And one thing that they're obviously ignoring is all the numerous examples since that law was passed in Florida that has saved people's lives. They're, they're not talking about that. They're not talking about all the people who are still here today because they were able to defend themselves and shoot their attackers you know, with that law in place, they're not going to mention that. And they won't, but it'll be brought up. Fortunately, the Democrats are not the majority. And it may not even get out of the committee. And that, that's the only thing that I hope for, Bob, is that this thing gets shot down, but it's it's been their objective for a very long time, these anti-gun people, to do everything they can to strip away our rights to defend ourselves and it's interesting. I came across a piece the other day. Someone made this interesting observation that if you know pro-gun owners were as violent and dangerous as anti-gun people claim we are, why are there still anti-gun owner? Why why is there still anti-gun folks around? <laughs> Good point. Good point. And then you look at history. You look at all the different times, you know, in all these tyrannical regimes, the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, the list goes on and on, where one of the first things they, they did was take away people's rights to own guns, and that basically allowed them to have their way with their people. And that's what is always followed. But I'll say this, though. Because of the fact that we have a long tradition in America regarding the Second Amendment, they can... In my opinion, I believe that they can pass whatever law they want to pass, Bob. They can they can come out and openly say that it's illegal. I think that while there may be some sheep out there that would hand over their guns, the majority of Americans would never, ever do that. You know, as the, in the words of the late Charlton Heston, from the, my cold, dead hands. So I, I definitely don't see the American people handing over their guns. They'll, they'll probably say this, Bob. Well, you can have my bullets first. I think uh, one-third would turn their guns in, the two-thirds would not. Whether they get a law or not. Yeah, and they've been, they've been coming up with all sorts of 
you know, schemes and PR campaigns over the years, like guns for food, guns for gift cards. <laughs> I see this done over and over again, and it just makes me really wonder, really? Um, no, I'm, I'm not going to be handing over one of my guns. No, thank you. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I mean, and my grandfather and I, we had this conversation years ago, back when I was younger. And he, he believes that the one, one of the ways that they're going to do it is by simply making, you know, taxes and fees and make it so expensive to own a gun to where a lot of people are going to have no choice but to hand over their guns. And I just said, Papa, I, I think that if people, you know, if it came push to shove, people would rather just hide their guns. Which they will. But it's, it's definitely a sad situation that we're heading towards in this country. You know, this, this inevitable standoff between the people and the government, it's getting worse and worse with each passing day and more apparent. And I, I see it coming. I don't know when. I mean, we, no one knows until it happens. But I don't know. I mean, I, th- I think, Bob, that we could be one major event away from, from things just falling apart on us. Well, I think we are. And uh, the timing gets hard, but I think it'll begin in, uh, in May, June. And uh, things will start deteriorating more. And uh, when that happens, um, you have a lot, a lot of other things in opposition to that. And that would be demonstrations and riots and uh, homeland security or law enforcement under federal edict uh, shooting American citizens. Well, I hate to be in a group of those people after one of them has done that because the public will go after them. And they won't just, you know, shoot the guy or woman who shoot, shot the defenseless American citizen. They're going to hit them all. Are they really in harm's way? It's a, it's a very grim picture that you're painting, but unfortunately, you look at all the facts and the figures, everything is pointing towards something coming down the pipeline. And I, I agree with you. I believe there's going to be way more protests coming up. And for whatever rhyme or reason, I mean, especially since it's an election season, and it, it's going to get worse. And unfortunately, as, as we've seen from past protest events, you know, the WTO in 2000, you, you had you know, several of the past uh, uh, Republican and Democratic conventions, and, uh, well, G20 in Pittsburgh, and, well, most recently with what's been transpiring with the Occupy movement, whether you agree with them or disagree with them, what, what the police have been doing in response to them is very extreme. And eventually, if it continues, it is going to lead to uh, a violent reaction by the people. I don't think um, Homeland Security has, is going to have the time to use up all that ammunition. Yeah, I mean, they... They can stockpile as much, you know, bullets and weapons as they want, Bob. But the problem is actually finding people that are going to be willing to use that those that ammo and weapons on the American people. Well, there's some uh, veterans working in there, and some retired police, but uh, the rest of them are rabble when it comes to violence or whatever you want to call it. It is sad, though, that they're going to find some people that are going to go along with it, much like with most of the, uh, well, what, you know, all these different stories we hear about what's happening with the TSA agents, you know, how they're willing to do such atrocious things to fellow Americans, groping women, children, senior citizens. It's just disgusting what they've been doing and, and been allowed to get away with. But I think that, you know, there's definitely a growing number of, People within this country, not just you know average Joe and Jane Q public, but like we mentioned, men and women in law enforcement, in the military, and even some serving within the federal government to whatever capacity. And you you've pointed this out time and time again about how in how the military, you know, is probably going to 
eventually have no choice but to step in. Well, that's the moment of truth. When they do that, they're toast. Because what's going to happen is that the people are going to come out of the woodwork. I'm going to tell them, you want it, you got it. It's just fascinating because this is a conversation that's kind of repeated itself over the past couple of weeks when I've been talking to several supporters of Ron Paul, you know, people that are you know, like-minded, believe in the Constitution, freedom, liberty, and believe that the government should be a certain way and limited and you know, responsible, not, not this out-of-control police state that we now have. A lot of them have gotten to the point now in their lives, Bob, where, and myself included, where you know, push comes to shove, we're willing to fight and even die for the cause. And this is a, a growing mindset you know, spreading throughout the country. I think it's a, lot, a lot of that has been latent. I mean, we're talking about things now that I was talking about in the mid-60s. And uh, this information has all been available. But, you know, people don't want to listen. But there is a coitery of people below the surface who know what's going on. And they're going to be of assistance to the public. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sad that we actually are even having that conversation, though. I mean, I, I mean, in, in best case scenario, you know, the way the government's supposed to be, according to the Constitution Bill of Rights, you think we wouldn't have to be contemplating the very idea of having to eventually rise up and and take on this system, but unfortunately. It's, it's gotten to that point. And as you pointed out just a moment ago, this is nothing new. This has been going on for quite a number of years. You've been you know, following it for a while now, decades, decades before a lot of us woke up to it. And I, I do feel, Bob, that all this is finally starting to come to uh, a crossroads, if you will. Either we're going to eventually head back towards liberty or we're going to fall further into tyranny. That's a good way to put it. And I'll, I'll say this, you know, I, I've i been, you know, a student of history, you know, an amateur history buff. And I've, I've looked at enough societies, well, over the past century that allowed ty- tyrannical regimes to rise to power, not even lifting a finger to stop them. And they paid the price for that. And I, I for one, refuse to allow that to happen on my watch, even if it means, you know, I'm going to be taken off this planet, off this earth, along with several others, I'd rather resist it than sit rotting in a cell in a FEMA camp. There's lots of people out there that think that way. <clears throat> Probably when presented with the facts, uh, I think you'll find that... Um, At least 40% of the people strongly believe in protecting yourself. And you don't need that many. All you need is 15%. Like there's 450 million guns in the country. And the population, if you cut it in half, is 1.6 million, assuming women and children don't shoot. Of that 1.8, 800,000 are veterans. 400,000 have seen combat. Would you like to attack a group like that? I don't think so. And in the, as a fact, if, if the military did that, they might find out that the guy that's shooting that was just their buddy over in Afghanistan. But he's out now, and you're still in. Well, I, I think, Bob, it's going to be a very eye-opening predicament for any soldier that actually follows those orders when the time comes. And they're, they're going to realize that not only are they going, be, they going to be having to fight the average citizen who's going to resist them, like you said, there's a whole bunch of veterans 
in this country who are also going to be fighting them as well. And, and my sincere hope is that enough of those men and women in uniform right now serving in the military to whatever form or fashion or capacity are realizing how bad things really are. And if that time ever comes, they will not turn our fire on American citizens. I mean, we can only hope that that's the case. But I'm, not, I'm sure there's probably a number of them that would follow whatever orders given to them. Well, I agree with that. I talk to these people by email all the time. And um, these are veterans. Some of them women. And uh, they say that the military won't fire on Americans. Well, what's say? I sincerely hope so, Bob. I really do. And, and I think there is going to be a number of women out there that are going to be fighting, you know, against whatever's coming our way as well. I mean, especially, you know, a lot of mothers out there. I mean, I think they're going to be even scarier to go up against than, uh, than veterans because they're, they're fighting for their children. And that's the last thing you want to do is go up against a woman, you know, and, you know who feels like they're, not only their life is threatened, but that of their offspring. Well, you're absolutely right about that. And a lot of women are shooters, which is another problem for the people who control government. That could jack up the opposition to martial law in a big way. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, I mean, the, the truth is, Bob, you think about all this. You actually break it all down and look at the facts and the figures. I mean, it is a, actually a very, very dangerous uh, position to be in for anybody that is actually stupid enough to go along with this uh, tyrannical authoritarian government and their plans. I mean, right now it might seem like a good idea because we haven't done anything. We haven't fought back yet. We continue to speak out and you know wake up the public as best as we can and prepare in our own ways. But once once it hits the fan, once you know th that hammer falls, I think they're going to realize you know, that the only thing they've done is stir up a hornet's nest. Well, they have to do that to complete their program. Uh, if they don't, uh, they're going to try to fake it through, and it's not going to work. No, it's not. And it's becoming more apparent of each passing day, Bob, that, you know, the government's out of control. They're no longer following the rule of law, especially our current president. And, well, a couple weeks ago, he was all confident that the Supreme Court was going to, you know, go along with Obamacare. And now that there's a, a lot of uh, speculation out there that it's possible that they may even eventually rule against it. It might just be a five to four ruling, but it could happen. And now it looks like the Obama administration is basically all but threatening the Supreme Court over Obamacare. And that's going to be a big loser for him. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, yeah, I mean, W was was a terrible president, horrible, and he, I don't I don't consider him a good guy either. He's treasonous, but I mean, it's just amazing how how far along Obama has gone and expanded that playbook. Well, they're all under the same under the same orders. So the results are the same. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right about that, Bob. And, and what's sad is you, you have a conversation with people, I'm sure you've had as well, where they, they will demonize Bush or they'll demonize Obama all day long. Yet if you mention the other guy, they, they just give you that look like, what? Don't you talk about Obama or don't you talk about W? They, they just don't seem to understand that they're playing for the same team. That's because they're dumb. And the insiders know that. Yep, I mean, it's just... It's just sad that you have so many people out there that that are just so brainwashed and programmed. It's just you do your best to try and wake people up, yet 
you know, the best we can hope for is that we wake up enough people and that we're able to turn things around without the need for a majority of the populace. And I've been asking this question to a lot of people, Bob, lately. In your opinion, what do you think Ron Paul should do of his presidential bid? Do you think he should stay the course and continue running on the GOP ticket? Or do you think he should go third party or independent? Well, third party is going to get support. I mean, if you can get 10,000 people to turn out positively to hear what he's got to say at UCLA, it's a major victory. And I'll tell you why I, I say that. I lived in Los Angeles for 36 years. And it was all, all uh, UCLA was always called the Little Red Schoolhouse. Socialists, communists, all kinds of people. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a victory. I agree with you, Bob, entirely. The more and more people that are continuing to wake up to Ron Paul, the better. And it's not going away. This this movement is no matter what happens, whether Ron Paul stays in the third, you know, GOP, third party, independent. You know, we're going to continue waking up more people, spreading the ideas of freedom and liberty, and they can't stop us. We got about a minute left, Bob. How can people get the international forecaster? Well, they can, uh, they can uh, the forecast is about business, finance, economics, social, and political issues all over the world. It's published on Wednesday and Saturday by email. And everything you need to know each month is on that in that publication. Um, hold on a second. Um, you got if you like a free introductory copy, you can go to the international forecaster.com f-o-r-e c-a-s-c-e-r dot com or you can go to i-n-t f-o-r-e c-a-s-c-e-r dot com int forecaster dot com if you'd like to ask a question get copies of the publication or if you'd like to become a subscriber uh, that's incorrect. Uh, if you'd like to get our free re- new report on gold and silver shares, email Bob, B-O-B, at I-N-T, F-O-R-E, C-A-S-T-E-R dot com, Bob at Intforecaster dot com. And for those of you who would like to call toll free, that number is 877-479-8178. 877-479-8178. And if you look at the subscribe, that's the place to go to. Why? They're giving out free one-year subscriptions to the, to the International Forecaster. And they have a special deal on that. And believe me, the the deal is really terrific. It absolutely is. Bob, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. Okay, bye-bye. There he goes, the one and only Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Be sure and subscribe to The International Forecaster, an excellent publication. If you want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, The International Forecaster is the way to go. Be sure and check out our website as well, freedomfiles.us. And join us every Thursday with Bob Chapman on the Freedom Files podcast.